Safe Lo Safov, the suspect in a New York City truck attack that left eight people dead and a dozen wounded, was a legal permanent resident of the United States who was radicalized domestically and carried out the attack in the name of ISIS, officials said on Wednesday. Sapov, a 29-year-old who came to the United States from Uzbekistan in 2010 on a diversity visa, appears to have followed almost exactly to AT the instructions that ISIS has put out in its social media channels for carrying out an attack, the New York Police Department Deputy Commissioner, John Miller, said. It appeared Sapov had been planning the attack for a number of weeks, he said. Handwritten notes in Arabic recovered at the scene of the attack included symbols and words with the basic message that the Islamic State would endure forever, Miller said. While Sapov was not himself the subject of a previous NYPD or FBI investigations, he did have some connectivity to people who had been the subject of investigation, Miller said. In 2015, prosecutors announced charges against two Uzbek nationals living in Brooklyn for allegedly attempting to join Islamic State militants in Syria. It was unclear if Sapov's connections were to subjects in this investigation or another. The Justice Department announced last Friday that one of those two men, Abderazel Hasanovich Jarabowev, a 27-year-old Uzbek citizen living in Brooklyn, had been sentenced to 15 years in prison for conspiring to provide material support to ISIS. New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, said on Wednesday morning that Sapov was associated with ISIS and said he appeared to have been radicalized domestically. After he came to the United States is when he started to become informed about ISIS and radical Islamic tactics, Cuomo added in a CNN interview on Wednesday. Investigators work at the scene of the attack where a man driving a truck killed eight people in Manhattan. Photograph Justin Lanipa Sapov worked as a Uber driver and had lived in Ohio, Florida and most recently New Jersey. Saipov is suspected of mowing down people as he drove a rented Home Depot truck down a cycle path in Lower Manhattan, not far from the World Trade Center. Police said he rented the truck on Tuesday early afternoon. One neighbor in Patterson, New Jersey, where Saipov is believed to have been living, told The Guardian they had also seen Saipov with a rented Home Depot truck in recent weeks. Carlos Batista said he thought it was strange when Sapov rented a Home Depot van, but left it parked across the street for days. I started seeing a Home Depot truck about three weeks ago, said Batista. He left it here for about a week, brought it back to Home Depot and got another one a couple days later. I never saw anybody rent something for that long, Batista said. The neighbor also said he thought it was odd that Sapov never appeared to be doing any work with the truck. Sapov, Batista said, would, get in a work truck, and you come back not dirty, with no materials. It's weird. Batista saw Sapov three or four times a week for about a year. He said Sapov also appeared to be with two other men most of the time. I saw him with those two guys more than I saw him with his wife. First time I met him, I had an altercation with the two guys he's always with, said Batista. But Sapov calmed the situation, he said. To me, he was a peacemaker. Ohio marriage license and Ohio marriage license shows that Sapov married a 19-year-old Uzbek woman, Nozima Odilova, in 2013. Both husband and wife listed Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan, as their birthplace. Officials confirmed Sapov had entered the U.S. in 2010 through the Diversity Visa Program, also known as the Green Card Lottery, which grants 50,000 visas each year to people from parts of the world with relatively low immigration rates over the previous five years. Donald Trump on Wednesday attacked Democrats over the program, saying it needed to be eliminated as soon as possible and the U.S. needed to get much tougher. In 2015, more than 4,300 people from Uzbekistan entered the U.S. using the visa program, with about half settling in the New York area, according to the New York Times. Dil Fusa Iskakova, who lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, told The Guardian that Sapov had stayed with her for several months about six years ago after arriving from Uzbekistan. He seemed like a nice guy, but he did and he talk much, Iskakova said. He only went to work and came back. He used to work at a warehouse. Iskokova said her family had lost contact with Sapov and she thought he had moved from Ohio to Florida, then to the New York area, and that he now had a wife and two young children. 
Mirk Mitmuminov, a Uzbek community activist who lives in Ohio, told Reuters and BBC News that he knew Saipov and that he had appeared to have been radicalized in the United States. He described Saipov as an aggressive loner who was not very popular with his own community, and who sometimes argued with other Uzbeks over his radical views. He was not well educated and had no knowledge of the Quran before arriving in the U.S., Muminov told BBC News. At the beginning of his time here, he was a normal sort of person. CBS News reported on Wednesday morning, citing unnamed sources, that Sapov had talked to investigators from his hospital bed and told them that he would have continued his attack and injured more people if he had not crashed. Law enforcement officials had interviewed Sapov at Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan, Miller said, declining to go into his statements in any specificity. Erratic customer in Patterson, New Jersey, the FBI had sealed off a block and a half area surrounding Genesee Avenue, where Sapov was believed to have lived for a few months. The street, in a busy, working-class neighborhood with lots of traffic, includes a row of modest, trois-story multifamily houses. This neighborhood is nice and quiet, Mildred Malavi, a Puerto Rican woman who was raised in Patterson said as she surveyed a long line of news cameras pointed down the street. We're shocked. Yes, we are. FBI agents were still investigating the house on Wednesday morning, and brought out a garbage bag of evidence. Police in Patterson, New Jersey, on Wednesday. Photograph Andrew Gombertepa at the Farm Boy Fresh supermarket in Patterson. Sapov had been an erratic customer who regularly argued over the price of a 12-pack of Canada Dry Ginger Ale, the New York Post reported. He would call the cashiers dumb, uneducated, and unnamed store manager was quoted as saying, Less than a block from Sapov's house is the Omar Mosque. Reports addressing whether Sapov had worshipped at the mosque were conflicting, with some neighbors telling the record, a local paper, that he had, and some worshippers at the mosque saying that they had never seen him there. The mosque itself is not under investigation, law enforcement officials told the record. Patterson, New Jersey, has a large and diverse immigrant and Muslim population, and the city has not escaped suspicion following terror attacks of the past. The NYPD had ordered surveillance of the Omar Mosque in 2006, according to a Pulitzer Prize-winning Associated Press investigation of the department's surveillance of Muslim Americans. The surveillance program, which included the use of informants called mosque crawlers, was challenged by the American Civil Liberties Union as discriminatory and unjustified. A lawsuit brought by the ACLU and others led to a settlement in early 2017 that required new standards for NYPD surveillance of political and religious activity, including installing a civilian representative within the NYPD, according to the ACLU. Just a few blocks from Sapov's home, on the main commercial strip, it is easy to tell Patterson is home to many Middle Eastern families. The Taza Cafe serves Manakish Fatire, a Lebanese pastry. Albasha serves a sampling of Middle Eastern meats. Nearby is the Middle Eastern restaurant Salah Eden. There are slices at Al Eden's Pizza, and Beirut restaurant has a hookah bar. New York's governor repeatedly called Sapov a depraved coward in a CNN interview. I resist the temptation to delve into who they are and why. We know why. They hate America, Cuomo said. We have the Statue of Liberty in our harbor holding the torch that says freedom and democracy. It's repugnant to them. Additional reporting by Michael McGowan and Sean Walker.